Welcome to our mentoring panel. And Leslie Andrews is the host of the mentoring session today, our, our panel session today. And we'll have questions towards the end. If you have a question, raise your hand and you'll be allowed to speak. If there's anything else that you think I can answer offline beforehand, you know, go ahead and put it in the Q&A. So I um, also want to mention at the end of the session, there will be uh, an eval, so be sure to fill that out as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Leslie and um, thanks to everybody for being here and go ahead and get started. Hi everyone. So I was told by Michelle uh, Harhoff, is that how you say her last name? Anyway, Kathy's partner on the WIT platform, that uh, a tweet that I had put out in November um, around summit time that was about the, what was it? The Women's Voices from the Data Platform session at Summit in 2017, which was my first summit that I went to. And it had Jen McCowan, Melody Zacharias, Megan Longoria, Catherine Wilhelmson, Mindy Kernett, Kathy Kellenberger and Re Irish in this picture. And, and I, I put out that, man, that these are, these were some amazing women that really inspired me when I, it was my first summit. I, I just, it was one of the first sessions that I'd ever gone to. And I was like, wow, maybe someday I could be like on a panel. And here I am. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> so, so here we are. And yes, we're going to talk a little bit today about mentoring and sponsorship. And before we get started, a little bit about me. My name is Leslie Andrews. I am a lead data architect at Three Cloud Solutions. I got my dream job because I started speaking and I went to Summit and I met all these great people and was inspired by all these women. And so thank you to all of you people for, for making this possible to me because as Reese says, lift as you climb. And, and because of all of you, I, I feel lifted. So um, I'd like to take a minute before we get started and let all of our panelists introduce themselves. Uh, Deborah, why don't you go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Deborah Melkin. I am based in the Boston, Massachusetts area. I am a SQL developer at a financial tech company. Uh, so I work with developers on all aspects of database. And that's pretty, pretty much been my career uh, since I've gotten involved with databases. Um, so I am a board member of the New England SQL user group. So we're the local data platform, Microsoft data platform user group. Uh, it's one of the older ones in the country. And I speak regularly at different events um, and, and other user groups. Uh, let's see. Um, and I was a, I'm very honored that I was awarded a Microsoft MVP back in November. Uh, I okay. think that's Good. it. So, oh, I also blog at Deb the DBA. So you can find me there. And speaker idol winner, don't forget that. Yes, I once, yeah, speaker idol winner of uh, 2019. And I was, I'm also an idea ace class of 2020. How do I forget all of these things? I, I think know, it still feels weird to say them sometimes. I know, I know, I'm with you. How about Deepthi, you're going to go next. Hello, hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I never thought I will sit in a panel discussion this earlier soon. Uh, so thank you so much for that. My name is Deepti Goguri. Uh, I'm a database administrator living in uh, Frankfurt, Kentucky. I uh, contract for Administrative Office of Courts uh, of Kentucky. Mm, and uh, uh, I do speak for different user groups, um, uh, United States, across United States and other countries as well. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and Microsoft Certified Solution Expert. I do blog for dbnuggets.com. And recently uh, I got like, Trend of Redgate uh, program, I got into that. So I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Thanks. Gilda. Gilda. Hi, everybody. My name is Gilda Alvarez. I've been in working with database administration for the last 20 years, both in the SQL and the Oracle area. I started back in the days when uh, Andy just started here in Orlando with SQL Saturday and I fell in love with the community. Uh, it was um, it was really an experience. I have to say that I've never felt in any other associations. The community, it's what makes this such a great um, 
association or, or community, the SQL community is unique. It has a secret sauce and is that everybody cares. Everybody cares about helping each other. And I've been doing um, as much as I can. I haven't been like going crazy doing presentations. I, I, I'm pretty busy most of the time. And, um, but I've gotten some time in the last two, three years and I wanted to help the students that are coming out with really no skills to do anything in the workforce. So I started mentoring these students from uh, you know the ages of 20 to 25. I do presentations that are very specific in how to enter into the SQL data and to the data platform. I, this is my background is one of the presentations that I do, which is uh, climbing the, the mountain of technology. And as you can see, there's a bunch of people right behind each other. And that is the only <laughs> way you can, you know, this is the only way you can get out there. You know, you put a rope on somebody and you lift and you lift and you keep going up. It, I won't say that you're lifting the other person, but you are that support system that that person will probably need when it's starting to climb this mountain. Because for us that we are in this field, it's, it's a pretty steep mountain and it gets steeper with all the new stuff. So. Absolutely, the steep parts at the top. One of the things that I love, you know, mentoring and helping people. Nice. Shabnan? Hi, uh, this is Shabnam Watson. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm a business intelligence consultant. I've been a consultant for um, quite a few years now, since 2006. Um, and uh, I started with the user groups in Atlanta. That's uh, where I met uh, Ree for the first time. Uh, I was very fortunate to um, know her. And then uh, it was Re and a couple other uh, people at the user group that uh, really helped me get started with speaking uh, first at the user groups then at SQL Saturdays uh, and then at Pass Summit. So it's been uh, quite a um, journey. It's been great. It has helped me um, get better at speaking at work, get better with my projects and everything. Um, and uh, last, uh, last year, I was awarded my first uh, MVP uh, for the data platform. So I'm very happy about that, honored um, to be part of this group. Um, and I continue to speak at events and I, am, I have a blog um, and very happy to be here today. What's your blog address? Um, I'll put it in the, uh, in the chat. It's the chat. Shabnam right, Watson, thanks. it's on WordPress. So it's shabnamwatson.wordpress.com. Hang on. Cool. All right. So let's start off by asking everyone if you have ever been part of a formal mentoring program, either as a mentor, as a mentee. Anybody want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. No. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> um, you don't, you know, this whole mentoring thing started, uh, I would say it's a reason because what we did in the past is we just bugged the hell out of people, right? I was like, hey, I want to know how to do that. And you would just go and sit with them. So I had amazing people that volunteered to help me um, do a restore or help me with um, Unix VI. And like, it was like crazy stuff. How do I learn this new language, you know? And, and they would give me like the, the little things on how to uh, do things faster in Unix and uh, my God, all these people that were amazing, what I do is just bug them. I'm like, can I, can I meet with you for 30 minutes? Can you just show me how to do this? So I don't think I ever had a, an actual, you know, formal mentoring. I, I think I, I kind of looked at the things that I was lacking and I looked for those people that were the best on those things. And that's how I did it. I will say I have been part of a formal mentoring program. I am on the board of a charter school. And one of the um, programs that the school had was assigning every incoming freshman a mentor. Um, and it was just somebody from the community that volunteered. And they stayed with that person for the four years. And we would have a quarterly uh, in-person meetings and emails. The, it was set up through Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and they have a platform where we could go in and work with um, like reading things that the, the student had written and, and being involved with trying to 
be a stable force in somebody's life who maybe is coming from a very difficult background to the school to try and, and get better. And I will say that all three of the mentor mentees that I had, I did not have very successful or positive interactions with. And I don't know if it just was a bad match or, or what, but it was very difficult for me to connect with all of the, the mentees that I was assigned, but I still finished all four years with all of them. <laughs> Deborah. Yeah, um, I guess it's two different ways. Um, one of them is as a mentor, I guess you could count the new stars of data as a formal yes. mentorship because I'm mentoring someone. Actually, uh, so the first one, my mentor, the person I mentored is here, that it's Deep Thee. So um, can't be prouder of her and everything that she's done since then. And that was actually a wonderful experience to, to say how I can, you know, my goal was to help Deep Thee and get her started on her speaking journey and really making sure she had the tools so she could shape who she is as a speaker. So it's really just been fabulous to see what she's doing. And yes. actually speaking of new stars of data, I'll put a quick plug, uh, plug in because their event number two is a week from today. Yes. So definitely if you have not signed up to, to attend new stars of data, do that because that first class has done so many incredible things um, and just, I, I love the camaraderie. I see it on Twitter all the time. So it's been wonderful to see what happened from the first version of that, per, of that event. So you can start seeing what's going on with the second version next Friday. And actually I am entering someone for that too. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how they do. So that'll be very exciting. Um, I'm a mentor for this next one as well. Right? I'm excited. Yes. It, yeah, it's it's great to, to work with people and see how people develop because everyone does things in a different way. So it, the challenge is definitely making sure that that person's voice comes through as a speaker and what yes. are they trying to say and how you can help say, here are things that I've learned from how to create a session, how I can help you or things you want to think about as you're putting together your session. So. Yes. Um, and it's making sure it's their voice, not my voice. It's their voice. That's what matters. Uh, from the mentee perspective, I guess you can kind of say, I'm, I, I guess it's a formal program because Paul Randall uh, over the summer said, hey, I want to mentor people. Let, let, me, let me see who I can mentor. You know, this, let me know if you're interested type thing. So you put a blog post in. He ended up picking everyone. So uh, he's doing his best with a lot of people. And I am in awe of the number of people he has taken on. So it's, you know, the challenge is because he's working with a lot of people and he's a very busy person. It, it is a little more informal and sporadic. I hope it's okay that I say that. But again, it's a different type of program as a mentee. So, um, you know, because mentorships come in many different forms. One is, you yes. know, I was talking about mentorship, which is a very short term. This one is a very long term and it's not as... Um, and it's on a different schedule too, which is also making it interesting. So I am, I'm looking, I, I'm enjoy, enjoying getting Paul's feedback and I actually owe him an email. So I will get on that soon. So yeah, those are the All two right. formals, I get programs, I guess you could say. Okay. Deepthi, we know yeah. your answer. <laughs> so I'll be continuing uh, the discussion with Debra uh, because we are linked in many ways. Uh, so uh, I started my journey in last August. Uh, previously, I, I did not have any speaking experience and um, I was in a state where like doubting myself, thinking, can I even speak? And I always had the dream to serve the community, but I really don't know like where to start because I, I don't know that there is a thing called Steeple family and there are like huge number of professionals out there who are looking to help other people. I didn't know about that. So luckily, one day I got to meet uh, with Kathy Kellingberg, and that's how I came to know, like, uh, about the SQL family or like where to start the blog. Like, she's the one who who told me to start the blog and how to. She helped me in creating one blog for myself, and that's where my actual career, speaking career, started. To uh, say that because I, uh, in my mind, I decided to be as a speaker. Uh, during my first call with Kathy, I was like so comfortable. She was so patient with me, listening my story. Uh, that is the reason even in the first call itself, I started trusting her and I shared my story. I told her what are my dreams and where I want to go. 
So she gave me those uh, few tools. The first tool is to start the bbnuggets.com, which is my favorite uh, website right now, not previously, but now it's my favorite <laughs> because I'm actively working on it. Um, so I started my blog. Uh, she introduced me to SQL family. That's how I came to know SQL family on Twitter. Um, so once I am on that platform, uh, the, I see this wonderful post saying that, hey, new speakers, are you like, are you dreaming of becoming a speaker for yeah. the first time? We are going to help you with the mentor, right? That is the, that is the important thing because as and new that speakers, makes all the difference in the world, knowing that you don't have to do it by yourself. Exactly. You know, that's a, that somebody, somebody is helping you. That's cushion. If you, if you know that there will be a cushion who will be supporting you, you, you are sure, like, even if you fall down, you are going to stand up by yourself the next time. Right. So yep. you can try many times and, uh, uh, there is this wonderful post from Ben Wiesman and I don't know like I, I chatted with him like I requested him like if I can be one of the presenters and I do not know he, he saw something in me which I didn't uh, which I didn't see in myself gave me that wonderful opportunity and I, I took that opportunity as like a real opportunity because that is the first time uh, at least I am there uh, to prove myself and they have given me this, um, uh, they have provided me with a mentor, Deborah Melkin. And that's a wonderful gift to me because it's like uh, we matched in like every way, I think. Um, for the, uh, she spent a lot of time with me in uh, talking to each other, like she came to know about me. And uh, since then, I like it, we built a trust between each other. So I had so much of vulnerabilities and doubts where like I couldn't share it to anybody, but I shared to Deborah Milkin because I started trusting her and she gave that, she gave that encouragement uh, in me and um, she made me become a better person since then. And I never looked back, you know, and you can see that in my work, right? Absolutely. And, and, yes. and, uh, and I should, uh, I owe you Deborah all my life. Thank you so much. And, for and that's that. what we want as a mentor is to see the people that we help flourish and grow and, and do more than we even do. Right. I mean, Deepthi, you have you have been like the speaker of the year since you did New Stars of Data. I mean, what have you done? Like a hundred sessions? At, I mean, it's like crazy the, the amount like, that you have gone um, out and, and, and I, done. I, I went that crazy. Not because I want to show off myself, but <laughs> oh no, we know you want to show off <laughs> <laughs> to prove to prove myself that I'm wrong. Like what I have seen previously, few years ago, it's like deepti before and deepti after new stars of data. So I yes. should be really thankful for Ben Wiesman, William Durkin, and Deborah. And yes. in between, Andy Yun also helped me a lot. Uh, that's like an informal mentorship. I had, but I have several others who. Uh, help me through this journey and the other program which I'm having like the formal program that Deborah has uh, said like Paul Randon mentorship program so I am in that program as well and oh, for, the, for the group buy even for the group buy I got the mentor um, Eric Darling data so uh, he helped me uh, he helped me in putting the presentation together and gave me invaluable suggestions um, those are my uh, formal and there are um, Many informal uh, mentors. I can say all of the SQL family members. Like if I start <laughs> telling the names, I will cover almost every one of them. <laughs> so I would like to thank each one of you for giving me this wonderful opportunity and giving me that cushion to, to trust myself. Like, okay, Deepthi, even you fall, you can stand up for yourself again. Go ahead, fall down, but get up again. That is what yes. I need right now. Shabnan, did you want to contribute something? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I have not been officially part of a mentor program or at least anything that's been called, you know, a mentor program, you know, in, with the exact same name. But um, I have to say that I've been fortunate to uh, either work or be at events where other people were there, where they were open for me to reach out and ask questions, whether it was technical stuff or you know, what do you do um, when you, you want to speak or give me feedback on my slides or presentation or um, they were available to sit through, you know, uh, dry runs of my presentation and give me feedback on how to improve things. So um, 
while I have not been part of a, an official uh, mentorship program, I've benefited a lot from being part of groups such as, um, you know, the local user groups, the Atlanta user group, and the past women in technology. Um, so um, every single person there has helped me along the way in some way. Um, so um, I've had to rely on the, my friends, the community, you know, the SQL family, uh, everybody that I've met uh, throughout um, different uh, events and anybody that I've reached out from time to time, you know, through Twitter or LinkedIn for help, everybody's been very helpful. Um, so that's, that's been my experience, but um, I've read about the mentorship programs and um, now I'm hearing from some of you that you've been on official ones. Um, so I, I may look into some of them. Great. So one of the things that uh, was brought up as a potential question before uh, we started was about uh, men looking to mentor women as a way to build relationships. And, and somebody had just said something about, you know, like Ben and William, and they are great guys, but maybe there are some guys out there that, you know, we all know, we know those guys, they are, they are not in it to be your mentor, right? <laughs> How do you handle that, right? Or even even in non mentor positions, right? There's the there's always that. Mm, there's these men. Do, have you had any experience, or what would you suggest to people to try and make sure that you put limits up to what type of interactions you have in those situations, or have you had anything like that? Gilda, you were the one that that brought that up. Did you did you have a specific scenario that? you wanted to talk about or address that had happened to you? Um, so I mentor a lot of Latinas that are wanting to get into the technology. And I noticed this new trend of male joining also. And from my previous experience, I noticed that they, you know, they're single. And uh, somehow my uh, mentorship or my program for uh, mentoring Latinas turn into this um, match.com. So um, <laughs> when we don't want that. I, yeah. So I have, you know, I put in the, the code of conduct and, you know, and I, I'm very particular about the people that are joining, etc. But I'm also, I need for women to know, you know, that you don't have to, you know, this is, this is not, that person is not going to be the only person that is capable of mentoring you. So learn to navigate those behaviors um, because it's out there. And, and, you know, and I just want to make sure that people are aware. Yes. Earlier this morning in Ree's conversation or your presentation, she talked about sponsorship being different from mentorship. Do any of you have sponsors within your organization that, have helped you and help you become more visible at your company to get those, those good things that come from trying to get to where we are? I actually have. So, and it happened to be a director woman that was uh, a Latina. So she looked at the, the, the amount of technical background that I had and that's how I was able to move up in the corporate ladder. And that is crucial because mm -hmm. we don't have, we have only 1% of Latinas in the data technologies. So that's a minute amount of people. So think about it. Right. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm very thankful, but I'm also, I work very hard to make sure the sponsors are actually putting their reputation on the line for you. They're saying this person is worth you hiring. So you want to make sure that you, you, you work hard to make sure that they, they know that they did the right choice by putting you and moving you up. So, and I do that all the time. I, I sponsored all the women. So I have many uh, women that when I go and I, um, and I do presentations in Latin America, especially Puerto Rico, I brought a lot of people from Puerto Rico to different companies that I've been working for because I see the talent and I see that people have done the same thing to me and because we're such a narrow percentage of women that are technically savvy, I feel like that pipeline needs to be stronger so that we can get them out there. Because I'm going to find a lot of men that are going to be talented in the Latino community, but those women are even, even harder to find. 
So one of the questions that we've had in the chat is how to identify potential mentees. It's hard to get young women excited about SQL database design when their view of IT is limited. Would you agree with that? And how would you go out to find young women? Where are they? <laughs> so I, I, sorry, can I, go ahead. You can, you can say, but the reason why, why I, I did Latinas in data was because you have to have that voice. People have to know that you are out there. And for some reason, yes. Latinas only trust Latinas for some reason there. I don't understand why. <laughs> it just, I, you know, so I started Latinas in data with that, you know, Hey, I'm here. Let me show you. So I do a general, you know, coaching and general mentoring. But then the specific people that I mentor, I pick like my hand. So there's five women that are constantly booking me for, you know, 30 minutes. Let's talk about your career. Let's talk about your resume. Blah, blah, blah. So it's you might it's like it's like finding like the 12 impossible. You know, everybody uh, cannot be part of this thing, you know, you have to want to be there. You have to want right. to put the work and, um, and many people are not going to want to put the work. So I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste people's time. So those people that are reaching out that are constantly hungry, those are usually the people that I mentioned. I think too, that being involved in a school or girls who code or some other local organization where the technical girls are gathering is a great place to go and find those, those people that you want to try and help and identify as bringing them up within, within the ranks. Um, our community college here has some deep dive programs that uh, you, know, you, you can go and, hey, if you guys need somebody to help you out, here's my card, call me and just do that work to go out and find those women and those young women because they're there. And because we know that we know that they get through school, they start in tech and then they leave. And it's that let's find them and get them and keep them here so that we have that voice. And, and those those girls can have a path to the top. I would also say that we should also make sure that we're visible, too, because it's easy to sit there and sit back on it. But I, I've always, you know, I guess for me, it's sometimes I'm the example. I'm a woman in technology. So me being out here, me being saying, hi, I'm here. And also making sure that we're keeping the doors open, because I think when the more of us are stepping out, you start seeing more people. And maybe that, can, you know, it's. What was I mean, there's a great quote, and I'm trying to remember what it was. It was the difference between diversity and rep and rep was it diversity and representation. Diverse is like you see lots of people, but then you see the people in the roles. And I'm I'm blocking on the quote. I do have it somewhere. I was at the Massachusetts Conference for Women um, back in December, and I think it was Aquafina who was talking about that sort of thing. So being able to be visible in the role in, in these leadership positions, and for us stepping out. Because again, I find it hard, like I want to be a better mon mentor or better ah. sponsorship and being able to be a sponsor for people. And it, and I, I'm like, I want to keep my eye out. So who do I need to sponsor? Who can I kind of help and, and reach out yes. to? Because it's, it is our responsibility. And it's not just the responsibility of people who need these to come to us. It's our responsibility to say, hi, we're available for you and making sure that we try to see people. And it, it is hard. Like I want to be better and I feel like I fall down and, and I, there's more I can do. I just don't know how to do it. So maybe this is my way of saying I can be a better sponsor or a better mentor by saying, my door is open, contact me, I can help you. And I think yeah. putting ourselves out that way so we are visible and we can be that example for other people of we're here, we're doing this and this is how we can navigate it and we can help you. Maybe that's another way we can kind of help people and help other women to see like there's opportunities and we're here to help, and this is what we want to do. If I also feel point, the... Go ahead, Deepthi. Um, if I add a point, uh, social media will be playing an important role here. If I say because uh, the user groups um, getting out to the social media saying that there are user groups here for helping other women and subscribing to those user groups, like I'm an example in this scenario. Like I came to know about SQL family or uh, the, that there are other user groups about the past, uh, past organization. I came to know about those by uh, like 
like contacting kathy kellingberg like that that's um that that hook like that that's connection i got it from an email subscription like if we if we can promote the user groups more and any specific programs that we are looking for we are here to help such kind of programs if we can um if we can make sure we implement those more i think that will be really helpful because social media is a really wonderful platform for that so we've had a question what is your best advice to someone who has never mentored but would like to so i would say that if if you're in an organization and there's you know a junior programmer or somebody that you know is you know below you in seniority or whatever just go talk to them say hey i think that i think you're kind of cool and i think that you could do great things here and just reach out to them and let them know that that you're there to support them and help them right that's the first part is to you know find somebody and you know some people might be like you know, whatever who is this weird lady coming to talk to me but you may strike a nerve with with somebody and and you might find that one person who's like oh my gosh they they like really really want to help me or really I am and those random things can be like career changing when i was gosh 20 20 plus years ago i was unhappily married i was working at a as a staff accountant doing uh, accounts payable stuff and we got a new cfo and he came in and he was like hey where do you see yourself in 5 years and i was like oh i really like computers i like building the spreadsheets and and making the organization better by you know automating stuff he was like oh well like mis Well, like five years before that, my sister was like, "Oh, you should check out this new program that Texas A and M has called MIS." And I was like, "Okay, if this guy that knows me two weeks can tell me the same thing my sister told me five years ago, maybe I should look into it." So I ended up divorcing my husband, going back to school as a single mother, and here I am today because that guy said, "Oh, MIS." That random. I mean, and. I wouldn't I would wouldn't consider him a mentor, maybe a sponsor, right? He 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 was higher than me. He you know, he was interested in what I had to say, wanted to know what my plans were, took an interest in me, and just that one random conversation changed the entire trajectory of my life. So that question is really hitting home here because five years ago I stood up in one of the women in technology lunch and i noticed we were the 1% latinas and that's when i my journey of going out to community colleges and universities and and i was like going crazy i don't know what i was doing i don't know it became a life purpose <laughs> to build that pipeline right to build that here i am you can come ask me questions i want to help you i don't know what do you want to do in life or 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 if you want to help minorities or we want to help uh your friend or your neighbor but make it part of your life purpose because this is not an easy task you're putting a lot of time from your personal life to make other people's lives better right and that requires something bigger than just i want to be a mentor it requires i care which is why the sequel community is yes. so amazing and it's the secret sauce of this it microsoft thinks that it's microsoft because it's microsoft i'm going to tell you something microsoft is microsoft mm-hmm. because of each one of you that are helping and teaching what you're doing to the community i don't think aws can ever get so watch out aws because there's a secret sauce that makes this a very good skill i mean a very good community so it becomes something that you have to really want to do because two three months into it you're going to be like oh my gosh seriously it's a commitment right it's like having a dog you can't just oh no i don't want to i'm moving to an apartment i'm going to leave the dog no you keep the dog until you're done you know with the job it's like kids it's like take it forever so your mentees become your kids so make sure you're you're there you're committed to it and you find a purpose in a, in in and it, it you know a life a fulfillment of your life being a mentor so i did that and i don't regret it that's just like dipti said i was jilda before and jilda after 
So it becomes, uh, you know, why I do what I do. Yes. It's like a two-way healing process. While you, even if you are a mentee or a mentor, both are changing the, in their own way, right? While, while talking to a mentee, different types of mentee, everybody has their own story. Knowing, knowing into that story and uh, suggesting in their own way for their particular story, every, for every single mentee, we need, to, we need to do that in a different way. In that process, we will be changing ourselves. We will build patience, confidence, enlighten each other building and uh, enlightening each other's lives right which is like incredible in my in every single way so um lastly you you asked a little bit before uh, about what's the difference between a sponsor and a mentor right in our opinion and i just want to share that um i didn't know for a long time and then uh, i read somewhere that uh, the difference between a sponsor and a mentor is that a mentor will help you get better at whatever it is, whatever it is you're trying to do or your goals, achievements. Uh, sponsor is someone who will fight for you behind closed doors, you know, at the company to make sure you're noticed. So they will go to bat for you at certain, you know, certain um, important events, right? Um, and um, it probably will apply more to to employees versus contractors because when you're yes. a contractor, you are you're working with the with a customer and they're your client. So it's a little bit different relationship. But uh, for employees in particular, it's very important to have a somebody who's going to um, vouch for you, especially for women. Um, it's it's more for for men. It can be more formal, but for women, it can it. It should, you should be looking out for someone who you know that they're going to uh, help you get ahead in your company um, as it is fair. I think even for consultants, though, that that's true because, you know, you, you've got a manager and that manager should be finding you stretch right. projects. And, you know, still trying to like push for you to yes. excel and, and, and lift you up within your organization. Right. So it, it so. applies more when you're an employee in an organization, yes. um, but as a, as a consultant, yes, um, too. So with my current client, my, um, one of my managers actually helped me to uh, work from, uh, to, to go work for another team that was more closely aligned with what my skill set is. So without her fighting for me, I would not have been able to do the switch. Right. And it is important to have people within your organization that you can go to that will be that, that helper that, you know, oh, yeah, you know what, Deepthi would be great for this. Let's, you know, pull her in on this project or just in on the discussion and, and, and increase her exposure and just, you know, let people know, because y- y- we all know there's that guy going, oh, yeah, I had this great idea. No, you didn't. <laughs> I had a great idea. <laughs> And I stupidly talked to you about it, you know, instead of, you know, somebody trustworthy. And that that happens a lot. We, we know it does. Um, so, so any, oh, go ahead. To, to add to what you're saying, I think when you talk about mentoring and sponsorship, although they go together in a way, I think we're lacking to explain the process, right? Yes. Mentoring will begin you into this, an amazing journey where you begin to learn how to brand yourself, where you begin to learn how to speak in an audience, where you learn, you begin to become really good at the skills you do. What that eventually does, it gives you exposure. And at, when you get exposure, the people that are around you are realizing the, the diamond you are, and they will not hesitate to give you that sponsorship to the next level. So even though they're two words, they, they have to work together and the mentor has to build you up to get you to the point of that sponsorship. So they're right, not, right, they're not exactly. the same, but it helps you. It, it'll help you in the growth. I love that explanation. I, really, I don't think I've ever heard it in terms of how you put those two together, but it really is great. Uh, so thanks for sharing that. So I wanted to ask anybody out in our audience if you had any questions or would like to to speak and chat with us. I think if you raise your hand, I'll see it and can let you talk. 
So if you would like to. Oh, there's a great question in the Q&A, Leslie, that oh. just popped oh, up. Oh, yeah, okay, Q&A, yes. How do you choose the person you want to mentor yourself? Hmm, that is a great question. I raise my hand on that one. Okay, okay so raise your hand. I started mentoring, I started out of surviving, right? Because as a DBA, you're like working all these nights and you're like, oh my God. And then I found this young girl, 24, 25 years old, she was helped us support and my computer broke and I went to her and she fixed it in seconds. And I could see her movement in the mouse and I could see her tabs and I'm like, oh, this girl has the same brain as mine. I'm going to mentor you. And she didn't know I was already like assessing her and, uh, and I could see how her brain works. So I'm like troubleshooter, you know, she likes to be proactive. I'm like, great. So I told her, do you know what a DBA is? She's like, I have no idea. Oh, let me let me explain to you. And then she became a DBA in eight months. Um, and but she was in San Diego and I was in Orlando. So I asked her if you're willing to come to Orlando, I'm willing to mentor. Well, I mentor her long distance, but then I brought her to Orlando and she became a DBA. She's an amazing DBA right now. But I had to I have to I had to reach out to that capability that I can mold that brain so that that eventually could help me as a DBA because I was the only one we couldn't hire anybody because I don't know budget I don't know so that person was in the company I brought her to my team and then eventually she took off in her career so what I'm trying to say is mentoring is kind of like a two-way type of uh, of situation that person is helping you you're helping that person and it, what ties them together is that commitment to make that mentee that next thing that eventually you will, you know, be able to hire, that you will be able to um, benefit from. Um, so your growth becomes an advantage to the mentor, uh, either to give you another job or to put you to place you in a friend's job or et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I will say that I also have a mentor as well and uh, another mentor in addition to Paul, um, because sometimes you do need different people to help you with different parts of your career and what you're looking for. And when I approached this person, um, first of all, it took me a, I, I, it was scary. Hey, can, would you be willing to mentor me? And, you know, I took the person is someone that is in the community. Um, I appreciate who they are and what they speak about and how they present. And I had a sense that they mentored other people. Um, but it also is the other thing, if you're going to ask someone to mentor you, you have to be willing to put in the work and you, and you're, it's, it's the recognition of where you are in your career, what you want to do and what you're looking for. And hopefully you can find someone that you trust enough or that you, you know, if you admire their career path or you admire something else about what they do, whether it's their technical skills or how do you get there or some of their growth. Um, it, it's, it is scary because there could be a chance where they're like, you know, you're great, but I don't see us having a good working relationship. Um, and so that's always, you know, anytime it's, it's trying to, to find a pair. It, it is scary. And it's, you, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Um, and if you're willing to put out the work for it, and if it's also understanding if the person has time and understanding about that. So it's, um, you have to be willing to, you know, figure out who in the community you admire, who's someone who seems like you can work with. And if you have a little bit of a relationship, just build up the courage, build up the nerve and ask them again. The worst thing yes. that can happen is that they say no. They say no. Exactly. Right. And it's, and it's usually not a reflection on who you are. I right. should, hopefully it's not the reflection of who you are. That's a totally different situation, <laughs> but it's usually, you know, hopefully, you know, but again, it's, it's be, you know, most people in this community, as, as Jill was saying, we're here to help. Like it, that's the most amazing thing about our, our communities. We're, we're willing to help. And so take, take advantage of that and, and ask us and we'll do what we can. If we're not the best person, maybe we know who it is. We can sponsor, you know, find a way to sponsor you with someone else and get you and help uh, create that relationship. So Lowry wants to know, I haven't had any women mentors, which would have been awesome, but have had some good mentors. How can I become a mentor for other women? Most of the people I currently mentor are internal and junior males. 
Well, first of all, if you don't have any junior women in your organization, it would be hard to find any there to, to mentor. So you might have to step outside of your organization to do that. Uh, the schools are great places to find young women in tech uh, the, at the high school level, the girls who code. Um, uh, Gail asked if there are any groups that help join up mentors and mentees. There's and actually the Latinas in data. We have 125 young Latinas that want to be mentors. So and there's also uh, speakingmentors.com. You can sign up there to be a speaking or mentee or mentor uh, if you need some help with some speaking. Anybody else have any suggestions on those two questions? I don't know oh, the specifics, but, to, I, but this is where it's getting involved with the user groups as well. You know, yeah. hi, oh, yeah. and the user go to, you know, it's hard when you're, you're, when we're virtually at user, you know, doing those virtually because you kind of have to go through the participants. Hey, is this person? Um, it's, it, that's where it's harder when you don't know the people, but once we're back in person, which is hopefully soon, um, you know, again, re make sure that you're visible, making sure that you're reaching out, saying hi to the, to the people who are showing up um, and just, you know, saying, hey, I'm available. If yeah. you want to talk, reach out. Even on Twitter. I mean, just go out, find the SQL Hat family hashtag, put out a post saying, hey, I'm looking for somebody that can help me with these things. Because it really, I, think that, I really think that sometimes it's, there's a specific thing that you want to learn or do or change about yourself. And I, I, I think that you, you as a person have to know what it is you're looking to do with a mentor. Just can't be like, hey, mentor me, make me better. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you have to want to make yourself better. You have to have that, that go get it and, and do it yourself and, and enthusiasm for change and growth and learning and becoming the best version of yourself that you can envision and getting a better vision of yourself by getting a viewpoint from somebody else that sees things about yourself that you can't. And, and, and you just can't say, oh, help me. You have to have a goal and a purpose and what you're trying to, to do and what you want your mentor to help you with. Mala and, just posted in chat, uh, if you're on Twitter and you need a mentor, use the hashtag data platform wit and we will amplify you. There you go. One of the things that I, that I believe we in the community, we, we have developed the human DevOps and what the human DevOps is, we don't just empower and grow women technically, but because we are women and have gone through the journey of getting, being in IT, we also have developed other tools to help us in our everyday life, emotions, mental health, you know, so we have not just somebody that can do a DBCC check DB, you know, we have a whole DBCC check mental health. We have a DBCC check everything that, that becomes part of the human person. Because when you're mentoring somebody, you're going to realize, you know, that same girl that I mentored uh, a while ago, she called me one night, five years into her career. And she's like, I don't want to be a DBA anymore. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold it. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's see what's going on, you know, so... Once you start analyzing that there's some emotions or spiritual things that are, have, you know, you realize you prevented another person from leaving the industry because they just were in a really bad moment in their life. So becoming a mentor also know, you know, know that you're going to have to also learn to look at the other aspects of a woman's life that will um, help her get in, back into the mountain, right? So that's what I call it, the human DevOps. It's, it's not just technical, it's, it's a whole process of continuum integration, continuum. I love it, <laughs> human DevOps. <That's, laughs> hashtag that, put it out there, yeah, exactly. folks. Human DevOps. <laughs> continuum integration, continuum delivery. Yes. <laughs> and I would like to add a point over here. Um, so anybody looking out for like dreaming big, right? Many of us like uh, think less about ourselves because I was in that place before. Um, at least I'm believing right now, at least some, some of a bit. So if you wanted to dream big, 
you have to first dare right dare to take that first step first step of your glorious failure and once you fail get up then if you fail get up and go on like we should be dare enough to speak up dare enough to ask question because we are here to help like hashtag hashtag uh, data platform wit if you are assigned to somebody if somebody comes up to speak with you then just dare to speak up like many people including myself i was so scared to ask questions like i will always feel like what that person might think if i ask this question we don't want to care that like if you have a question that you need a clarification on dare to speak up that 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 is the best suggestion i can give because i took that step as well and it is hard to to it is hard to, it is hard it is but if you're thinking that question somebody else is too and you know ask it and as from like just as a speaker you know we want you to ask questions if we're standing up there in front of the crowd going anybody got any questions we really want you to ask us questions <laughs> all right what else do we got i don't think we have any more questions besides the public hashtag is there another way for a woman to find a mentor i'm sure you could email any of us i mean besides yeah. the hashtag i mean just go out and dm somebody on twitter hey i like the stuff that you talk about can can we be friends can we talk yeah i don't know if there's a formal if we have a formal thing yet i'm going to add the word yet cuz it sounds like there's a need in the community mm-hmm. yeah um so something for us to think about but yes yeah, feel free to mala suggestion here listing what you want from a mentor uh specifically in your tweet with the hashtag would would go a long way towards finding somebody that's a match to you helping you achieve those things yes and it's yeah, dependent upon somebody... us to answer too sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there yeah. oh, no no somebody just put in there that that they were rejected from a mentor just understand is like dating you know like in the dating app swipe left swipe right you know whatever <laughs> yeah. if this person didn't like you find somebody and there are believe me there in this community i won't say out there but in this community there's always a hand somebody's hand giving you a hand and just take it but be very understand treat it as gold because their time is very valuable so have a plan right you want to be mentor have a plan what do you want to do when do you want to meet what do you want to accomplish from those 30 minutes that you have with that person how do you squeeze the best out of those 30 minutes so have a plan i think i'm going to do a presentation on how to have a plan because i feel like that's a that's a difficult one because um you have to come to that mentor with the plan and you have to see this is what i want to get and this is how when i'm going to be able to achieve this when that person sees that you have such a hunger to learn hungerness to learn that person you know their heart melts because you know what you were that person one time and you just yep. you just can't say no So Jade has asked what are some techniques you use to overcome imposter syndrome when speaking or training others like getting over thoughts like I'm not an expert or I don't know enough to teach someone else. Well, I'm pretty sure that we all still have those thoughts, so <laughs> that is what running in my mind right now. <laughs> Every time I get yeah, up to yeah. speak, why are these people going to listen to me? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> So <laughs> you just get up there and you just start talking and people listen. Don't even think about it. We all have the same problem. All these people here, we all have the same problem together. So let's ha- let's let's embrace imposter syndrome as right. a thing that could happen to you. Because recognize and embrace. You're humble to know that you don't know it all. That humility makes you the best out there. So welcome to the imposter syndrome family. Yes. Have none. What do you think? Um so I think usually um as a speaker or someone who's teaching something you usually know more than what you think so you may um get scared that you're not an expert on a subject but 
Um, that's usually because you've been working on it for so long. You've forgotten that someone from the outside, they're not going, they're going to benefit so much from all the things that you stumble upon and work hard to figure out. So there's always somebody who's going to benefit. And if somebody's, you know, in your session or presentation and that's not the right thing and they know everything, then um, they can leave. So it, there is not a problem with that. Absolutely. But I think that you get more out of the speaking than just speaking. You, you become, you get confidence. You get, um, in some job interviews that I was doing, they would ask me questions specifically about something that I'd speak on. And man, when they asked me that question, boom. I have, I have an entire script prepared for what I talk about in my, oh, tell me about, you know, star schema. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I could talk about star schema for an hour if that's what you want me to do, because I got a whole presentation on that. And so you, you really come across as a, you know, much, much better candidate because you're, you, you're fluent and you can talk that talk without having to think about it. It's just second nature. And that really comes through when you're trying to get a different job or uh, anything else when you're when you're presenting or doing things. You you automatically don't say ah. Uh. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm I'm not going to say ah. Uh. I'm going to sit there and go. And so then you just you you quiet. You you teach yourself those things. And so there's so many other skills that carry over to other parts of your life when you start to speak about on a topic. And again, you don't have to be the expert. In fact, lots of times I'm not, and you know, but you're not there to be there for the experts. You're there to help. Again, there's people that don't know, those junior level people who can go back to work now and go, hey, I know, I know about a star schema now, and I can build this really great thing that's that's gonna make a huge impact because I learned this one thing. So you're not there to teach everybody everything. You're here to teach that one person that one thing that's gonna change their life. And I also find by putting together a presentation, I learn. Um, yes. Actually, I put one together so I could learn. I don't know Azure Data mm-hmm. Studio. I don't know SQL Notebooks. <laughs> but, you know, I can't do it as it works. So I made it a presentation. Now, okay, yep. let's, let's, let's play. Let's figure out how do you start. Yep. Um, and even stuff that I do know. I, okay, I want to make sure I get this factor. Oh, hey, I didn't know you could do that. That's kind of cool. And so, right. again, it's it's... It's why we're doing stuff is to help us grow as well, not just to teach other people. Um, it's in, it, I mean, it's great to help other people too, but it's helping, you know, there's, we all benefit by doing this stuff and getting involved. And I think for the groups that help join up mentors and mentees, any user group in your area is going to be able to do that for you. I mean, go to those user groups, meet people, ex, you know, expand your network of connections to, you know, different organization go to a user group that maybe isn't something that you actually do maybe maybe go to a dot net user group they need wherever those people work they need database people you know it it doesn't necessarily have to be a a group that you are already in expand your horizons go to go to a different user group learn something new I think if you learn anything while you're putting a presentation together yourself, as Deborah said, then someone else is going to learn from it too. Just think about it that way. While you're working out whatever topic, if it's new to you and you're learning, studying it, then there, there's got to be a, a lot of other people out there that are going to benefit from your presentation. And Toastmasters, yes, Shabnan yes. says. Yes. Absolutely. So- That's great for speaking. It's a really good program, um, and especially the beginner um, part of it. And I don't know how it works now that everybody's virtual, but uh, one of the first sessions that they do in Toastmasters is just for you to get up, uh, walk away from your chair, all the way to the front, and be able to talk for five minutes and not die during that time, and then go (laughs) back and sit. So that's all you got to do. So it's a very um, easy program, well thought out, that will help you get over these things and improve gradually. So pardon me for interjecting, but for just, just for Toastmasters, um, they have gone virtual in a big way now, a really significant way. Uh, there is also um, somebody out of Microsoft, uh, the Chicago office, who is doing a special group just for tech speaking. 
So to mentor you with tech speaking skills, which may be a little bit different than anybody who wants to go up there and speak. So if you need an introduction or if you, you know, if you want to know who that person is and such, then, you know, please um, tweet at me or, uh, you know, send me a message. I'd be happy to introduce. Yes, that's great. So we're out of time. We do have one last question about how to brag about yourself. That's really hard for a lot of women. Lots of guys are, oh, I'm so great. Women, mm, we struggle with that, but we're awesome too. <laughs> so everyone, this has just been an amazing discussion. And I feel like we could probably have had a whole day <laughs> because, it, there, you know, it, it is such an intriguing topic. And, you know, I am so grateful for the people at the beginning of my career, middle of my career, that's helped me along the way. And I'm really glad that I can pay it back once in a while, like I had for Deep Thee and some others. So, um, so really, and I, I knew this was gonna be amazing because look at this panel, such great leaders in the community. So I knew it was gonna be great. So we Thanks have- Thanks for putting it together. Oh, you're yes. welcome, what a pleasure. Uh, the next session is about SQL notebooks from, um, move something out of the way so I can read the names here. Um, Julie Cosmano, Cosmarno and Barbara Valdez Mireles, I think. And so be sure to join us for that. It's coming up. That's something somewhat new for DBAs. So I hope that um, everybody joins us and learns something new. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. thanks it was a lot of fun. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining.